Hello and welcome to another exciting Maya Q&A. It's Tuesday so it's time for another question and this week we have a question from Brave B. Wrinkle map driven blend shape? It's a great question and a wrinkle map is just a normal map that is adding some extra detail to an existing deformation. I'm going to create some small wrinkles above Franklin's brow so that as his brow goes up we're adding a texture alongside the existing blend shape and this will also work with any other type of deformer that your rig might have. You can connect a wrinkle map to a skeleton joint, you can connect it to a blend shape or even to another deformer. So I'm going to look at taking some normal maps which I've made and connecting them all together through some hypershade magic and then I'll try and automate the whole process by using some set driven keys. So I'll be setting up my file with three normal maps but there could be many more. The wrinkle maps can be tricky to set up because what we're actually doing is that we're layering these multiple normal maps and revealing them at different times. Simple rigs like Malcolm haven't got any pores or fine detail, but I'm assuming that you want to use this on a more complex character. So I've made a very simple base layer normal map, and I'll be layering over another two normal maps which will have the wrinkles painted for the right brow, and another map which will have wrinkles painted for the left brow. So I've already got a shader network set up, but I'm going to be working only with the normal camera property. To make the normal maps appear in Arnold, I'm going to be using an AI normal map. You can find this in the side menu, but you could also use the bump 2D node, which my normally uses for bump maps, but I find that it makes more predictable results in Arnold if I use the one that comes with the actual render engine. So now how are we going to mix all of these maps? I'm going to open up all the three files and drop them into the hypershade so I've got all my normal maps available to me. By connecting them one at a time to the AI normal map node I can see the end results in the Arnold renderer where each one will have a slightly different wrinkling effect. To start mixing them I'm going to create a plus minus node by typing tab on my keyboard and typing the first few letters in. I'll then rename this node to L brow difference and I'm going to set the type of operation to subtract. The normal map has RBG data so I need to plug it into a 3D operation as it has three input values. I can add two inputs and wire in the base map layer subtracting it from the left brow layer by putting them in order. You can check this is working by soloing this layer by pressing the S button in the hypershade and see in the viewport that everything should be black on Franklin except a little wrinkle that should appear green on his brow. The result of this node should go through a multiply divide node which I can access also by pressing tab. I'm going to rename this node to L brow strength. This will control how much of the wrinkle is revealed and we'll connect it later on to the blend shape to automatically turn this value on and off. Afterwards we'll take the connection of the multiply divide node and plug it into a plus minus node. This node will add all the normals together and I'm going to rename it as wrinkle map list. Now I'm only going to be adding three maps into this list but you could make it as long as your character needs with having 10 or 20 different wrinkle maps if you need it. Now I'm going to connect the first base layer and then in the second input I'm going to plug in the output of the multiply divide node which will control the left brow. The result will be wired into the Arnold normal node and now we can see the brow and wrinkle appear in the render. You can then repeat the process for the right brow following the same steps. We first of all start with the plus and minus node which will create a difference map for the selected normal. We'll then create a multiply divide node which will control the strength at which the wrinkle is displayed and then we'll plug it into our wrinkle list which will hold all of the mixes that we want to have inside of the character. So what I need to do now is to create a custom attribute to control the strength of each brow. I'm going to do this by selecting Franklin's left brow control and take advantage that he already has a rig working for him. I'm going to go into the channel box and I'm going to press edit custom attribute and this will add a attribute that I can control by selecting a few items. 
I will set the name to L strength and then I'll set the type to float. So that will allow me to add in decimal numbers. I'm gonna set a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of one and hit okay. Now's the time to wire everything together. Selecting the brow control again in the viewport, I'll go back to the channel box and choose Edit Connection Editor. I'm first going to select the brow strength property in the hypershade and connect it into the left column. I will add the brow control to the right menu by choosing Reload Right, and I'll scroll down to select the L strength property. I'll then scroll down to the input 2 values and reveal input 2x, y and z and select all of them by holding down shift and click. Now I can repeat the process for the control on the right hand side as well and that will allow me now that if I go into that custom attribute and type a value I can control how strong that wrinkle is revealed as it is moving the multiply divide node. Now you could just add some keyframes to this value, but let's take it a step further, just because I really don't like having to type in values and key things if I already have a visual control available to myself. I'll select the brow control and open the animation tool set and look for key, set driven key, and choose the set options box. I'll then load the controller for the left brow to be the driver and also the driven and I'll select the translate Y value and I'll connect in the bottom list to drive the L strength property. I'll then press key and that will connect both of these properties together. If I think of this as an end state, I'll be able to take the translate Y and type its value to zero in the channel box and then take the L strength value and type it to zero also in the channel box and press the key button again. This will set a separate key that will remove the effect that I just created. To make sure that this transition will be smooth as we increase the value of strength L, I'm going to open my graph editor and I'll change the tangent type to linear. Going back to the viewport, I can now grab the left brow control and if I turn on my Arnold renderer, you can see that as I move the brow up, the wrinkle starts appearing and as I push it, the effect becomes more extreme and if I lower it back down, it disappears. Now what I can also do is that if I wire everything up on the right hand side as well, I now have the capability of driving that wrinkle map just by moving my animation controllers on the viewport and the wrinkles will turn on and off alongside the blend shape. Thanks to Brave B for his question and to you for watching. If you'd like to ask a question that can help you learn more about Maya, then drop me a line in the comment section below. Like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out and you can hit the notification button if you want to know when I'm releasing my latest videos. Again, thank you all for watching, keep those questions coming and as always, keep learning, stay strong and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.